I'm walking along here now. We're just at the back of the old Futurist Cinema. It's really sad to see it. It's not a cinema any longer. There are trees growing out, the building, the bricks coming down. It doesn't look like a former palace of dreams, does it really? But that's what it was. That's what it was. And this is where people would get off the bus, get off the trains, come crowding along Lime Street. It's quite sad when you look at old buildings this size and you think, what, what can we use them for now? And not cinemas. Sad. Still beautiful though. So here we are at what was the back door of the Futurist Cinema. Some wonderful graffiti, the key to making great art is all in the composition. At one time, this street would be absolutely crowded with people moving backwards and forwards towards Lime Street, Skillorn Street, the Adelphi Hotel's just in front of us. So this is all part of Liverpool's changing city. Lots of new buildings going up, lots of old landmarks disappearing, going down. And you wonder if we've been sort of sold a bit of a a copper coin instead of a golden crown, really, because the sight of some of the things that we've lost, the skill, the expertise that went into making these buildings that we came to for pleasure. We've swapped them for square bricks, Lego experiments. And look at this. Amazing, isn't it? They don't build them like that anymore. Imagine your excitement as a child now walking along here, coming towards, there were two cinemas that you could choose from. The Futurist and the Scala. And the one that we're going to now, and the one that I have particular memories about, is coming along this very road about 32 years ago, 34 years ago, with my son, Neil. And I was bringing him to this cinema here to see Superman. And it was something that we weren't able to do often, so when we did do it together, um, as a mum and a son, it was special, it was special. What we're looking at here now, look at this. It's so upsetting that in such a short space of time, we can have lost so much beauty and allowed it, allow it to look like this. Just look at this building. Look up. Look at the decoration. The picture house. And people will walk past it now and a lot of people will never know it in its former life, what it was, what it represented to so many people in Liverpool, adults as well as children. This was a regular night out. So we came to see this Superman. And here we have it. And we're really, really lucky to have an original poster from that time. Absolutely original in beautiful condition. Look at this. It's even flying. <laughs> Superman. There we are. And on the day that we came to see it, my son and I would then have sat in the Today Circle. Our seats were up in the circle and we always tried to get them there so we could look over, have a better view because he was so small. And we've even got one from the evening circle. And as courting youngsters in Liverpool, this is where you would have started of a night, in the circle, where no one could see you. But my particular memories of that day had more to do with my son. Uh, we'd have had the popcorn and the ice cream and enjoyed the film. And he was so taken with it, so taken with it, that when the film was finished, <laughs> he actually came racing out of the cinema, tried, pretended to fly 
down the steps here at the back, which we can no longer see, and then would flew along the road to where the bus stop was when we get our bus home, onto the bus, flew onto the bus, and then sat down. And this is how he continued for the rest of the day. But the biggest surprise being that when I got him ready for school the next morning, he'd been so taken with the film and with Clark Kent and with Superman that he'd taken a pair of scissors to his hair, cut all his fringe away and just left one lock in the middle to represent Superman's famous lock there. So, uh, and that was how he went to school that day. So it wasn't just a day out in the cinema, it ended up with a, uh, an afternoon out in the hairdressers the next day. Our lives are full of these memories. Our lives are full of the times we spent with our children, as we did with our parents. And it's such a shame. Now, what do we replace that with? It's not the same to sit in at home and, you know, stick something on the telly or whatever. It was a thing of wonder when you came to these wonderful, wonderful places. They smelt different. They smelt sweet popcorn. You were allowed treats you wouldn't normally have at home. But the thing was when the lights went down and the curtains parted and the music started. You'd left Liverpool. You'd left Liverpool. You were with Clark Kent or you were with Bambi or you were with Doris Day. You were one of the seven brides for seven brothers and wherever you were taken, it was somewhere magic. And then at the end of it, the lights came up, your coats went on. Out you came back into Lime Street. And one way or the other, either that way for the train or that way for the bus. Just opposite here is another absolutely beautiful building. Much, much bigger than this, this is, the Futurist. That was the ABC. And it takes over a whole corner of a very, very busy part of Liverpool's inner city. And I have absolutely no idea what they're going to do with this building. If you look at the structure, it's immense. And again, that was so beautiful inside. It was so rich, decadent looking. You were going to somewhere different, somewhere special, somewhere exciting. That was a much bigger cinema as well. It was vast when it opened out, when you went through the doors and it opened out into this big hallway, this big cavernous space. Again, it was somewhere exciting, somewhere so different. And now full of what? Cobwebs, ghosts, rats. It would be a shame though if it was demolished and something square and ugly and modern and multifunctional was put up. I don't think we realise what we've given up in our search for the future. That we've lost so many wonderful links with our past. A telly isn't a cinema, is it? Come on, let's be honest. A small screen will never, ever, ever reach what a big screen like this did. Multiplexes, how convenient but with none of the glamour and the beauty that these cinemas had. And for working class people in Heighton who'd saved up to come out, it meant a lot, they really did. So there we are, Clark Kent, Superman, all in the imagination of the head of one seven-year-old boy and a pair of his mother's scissors. <laughs> He's got lovely hair now though. So from the wonderful hanging gardens of the Futurist, we're going to move just a little bit further along Lime Street. I mean, literally just steps away, where there was a system cinema, if you like, a rival, called the Scala. And inside the Scala, which is now a nightclub, this was extraordinary because it had some beautiful Egyptian artwork inside. That's what it was famous for. Now, both cinemas were bombed during the war, and one was repaired a lot sort of fully than the other one. But still, again, you wouldn't believe it now just looking at this building and what it's been turned into. Again, what a palace of dreams it was. All of these cinemas as well, they were really well fed by the people of Liverpool. Even though they were so close together, there was always something different to see. It is a shame when you see it now. It's for sale. You got any money? Could you make it a palace of dreams again? <laughs>